And, you know, another thing I want to mention again, even though I know you are aware because you've mentioned it in one way or the other. So JavaScript was just for the client side. When we talk of clients, we are talking about the browser, okay? It was used on the client side. The things we see for interacting with the browser or our web pages, it, it could not be used on the server side. But when Node.js was introduced, we now have the chance to use JavaScript on the server side too. And that is why we're able to build a complete backend with JavaScript. So Node.js helps us to build that too. So we're able to use JavaScript on the server. So yeah, this is what I was just explaining. Before, you know, we are, we've gotten to a point in programming where at first we have we had to build everything together, both the backend and then the front end. But now we're able to build front end on its own and then build the backend separately. And then these two service, these two um, parties can communicate through um, a particular point. So we have web apps, like what you learned building with Vue, it's a client app on its own, that's a web app. You can also build mobile apps, either using React Native or using um, Swift, any mobile, any way. And then those apps, the web apps and then the mobile apps, they are, alone they are standalone i would say they are just it's like uh, all right so i wanted to give you a metaphor but i'm not getting one maybe when okay. one comes in our um, next week so i would say the web app and the mobile app it's a complete app but without any functionality yeah let me put it that way okay let's say you have um, a social media app built on the web like using view or um, built on a mobile using react native okay you can have, you can you be able to interact with the app, but let's say we want to post something on our social media platform. We will not have any backend service to hold that. So when we post it, it goes, but the moment we refresh our app, everything, we lose the data, uh, but we are able to build a backend service, which will handle those requests for us. We post something, the backend service will receive it and store it in our DB for us. Okay. Uh, so yeah, someone would say, why why would why would you choose Node.js over um, different backend um, systems? You know, you, you, there are various ways we can build backend services. You can go with PHP, you can go with in different languages. But why would I use JavaScript for the backend? And then I would say it's highly scalable, it's data intensive, and then it's it's best for real time apps. Let's let me show you something I was reading online. Node.js was introduced in 2009, okay? And after its release, I think this article was posted in 2018. People initially, they were using Java for their backend, okay? But after Node.js was released, they had to drop Java and then go for Node.js. And they, they released some statistics, very amazing. And I, I want us all to see it together. So this is a post, and then this is the original post. Okay, so this is on PayPal's Medium account. This, so this is the advantage or some of the results after they switched from Java to Node.js to double the request per second versus the Java application using a single call for the Node.js application compared to five calls in JavaScript. So we are going to understand this particular statement along the line. So they doubled the request per second. So let's see if they were making five requests at a time. Now they're able to make 10 at a time. And that is very good for an app. Okay. Another advantage of Node.js over their Java app they had earlier on was that 35% decrease in the average response time for the same page. So the average response time if it was taking longer, now they were able to reduce it by 35% after they switched from Java to Node.js. They also built almost twice as fast with fewer people. They did not need um, so many people on board, like, like compared to the Java team they had. So that is also an advantage of Node.js um, over their Java app they had. And then it was also written in 33% fewer lines of code. You know, it's that, that's obvious because Java, you have to write so many lines of code in order to get your output. 
but with um, JavaScript, they have to write 33% fewer lines of code. And that is also um, something good. They constructed with 40% fewer files. Okay, so the number of files they created in their system, they were 40% fewer than that in Java. So, so that's from um, PayPal, okay, after they switched from Java to Node.js for their backend. So this is a statement from the CTO. Maybe I will drop the link and then you can go and read um, later on. But uh, yeah, that is it from PayPal. Aside PayPal, the other companies also using um, Node.js. And I would let I would like that sort to go through. We have LinkedIn. I'm sure you are all aware of this in particular app. LinkedIn, Netflix, Uber, Trello, PayPal, NASA, eBay, Medium, Groupon, Walmart, Mozilla. They all use um, Node.js. So it's not like uh, you're forcing you to use Node.js, but it comes with um, some advantages you cannot do away with. Okay. Aside these apps, there are also desktop apps. You can also build desktop apps with Node.js and with the help of Electron.js, which is uh, which helps us. So Node.js gives us the environment. Then we have this framework, which will also help us build desktop apps. So our VS Code that we are using, it was built with Electron.js with the help of Node.js. So Node.js, we're able to build desktop apps like VS Code. Facebook Messenger, we use almost these apps, we use them almost all the time. They were all built with Node.js, Visual Studio Code, Facebook Messenger, Twitch, Microsoft Teams, Figma. We've been using Figma for some time now. All these apps were built with Node.js. And so you are not limited when you decide to go that um, that path, okay. Uh, and so when I say it's highly scalable, then I mean from what I read from that of PayPal, there is no other than that you might be able to say that will convince me to drop Node.js. Yeah, it's data intensive, and then real time apps. Node.js is best for building apps which are disk. Which, which are disk or um, network access intensive. So if your app or your program or your system is going to do more of disk access, accessing the files on your system, or is going to involve so much network access, then Node.js is the best for you. And I will show you why later on with this example. But for now, let's understand that. But when you are building systems which are CPU intensive, what I mean by CPU intensive is the example is a game. Okay, the CPU has to do so many calculations. And because Node.js runs on a single thread, I'm just introducing that to explain, I will explain that to you too as well. It runs on a single thread. Uh, we will not be able to build a complete game or video encoder or an image processing program with Node.js because it involves CPU intensive uh, stuff. So understand that when you're building systems which are CPU intensive, you can't go for Node. But when it comes to network access or disk access, it involves these things, the file systems and your networks, then Node.js is the best for you. And we're going to see why later on. So yeah, these are some of the advantages of um, Node.js. 